addition to uh, joining, scarf joining the uh, two eight foot pieces for our Kielsen, about a half inch birch ply, we've got these one by select pine that will be uh, the installed along the chine and along the shear. I'm gonna take four at a time and we need to scarf join these again. We have sort of a five inch run. <laughs> Decision time for redesigning the transom. I've been mocking up those curves and lines and here's where I've arrived. You want to move uh, this point on the shear uh, up three quarters and out an inch. You want to move this point on the chine up one and three quarters and out three quarters of an inch. So a little bit taller. And we want to move this point at the keelson up one and a quarter. So basically slightly flattening, moving uh, <clears throat> the whole thing down or up, depending on how you're looking at it, and broadening it just a bit. I think that's um, that's close as we can get till the whole thing's put together and we can <laughs> see how it turned out. Just to make sure there's nothing objectionable that shows up at this scale. I doubt it, but uh, also what tends to happen is you make these kind of dynamic changes, at least for me, because I don't build these things very often, and I forget to update the plans, and if I ever want to build something again or remember how I did it, uh, then, you know, now I can't remember whether this is reliable, so I would like to keep this documentation as accurate as possible. I think that's the new transom drawn on there. I'm gonna take the old one off, bring it and lay it on here for one more sanity check. The old transom. So I think that's as good as we can get at removing accidental mistakes. I'm gonna cut this thing out. Not too much left of our sheet. That's right. Yeah, got our uh, set to our new height down. Eyeball wise, these adjusted positions look just like what I was hoping for. All right, next step I've been pondering over is, uh, as with other other times I've built boats this way, how to set the keelson down in something that is an ever-changing angle and there's a couple of ways that keep suggesting themselves <clears throat> what i'm trying to do this time is i'm assuming that we want the bottom of the plywood hull to stop at a one inch gap and the reason is we know we're going to have a skeg here we know we're going to have a dagger board coming through here and so I think the way to think about it is follow that as the top of the keelson and that will provide sort of a reference point how deep to cut in to let this three inch strip which is the keelson sit down into these ribs. Made a little pattern. It's the width. 
has the center line marked. I was using that to I'm using the ancient saber saw. Two and R1. Got the keelson notched in and uh, trimmed uh, the excess off so we'll sit down and got it uh, clamped into place. I think it's the curve's looking pretty good and this now gives me the opportunity to uh, draw out the shape of the stem. So again, you know, if this was a kit boat or something I'd built before, we'd have a pattern ready to go, but it's, <laughs> it's a lot of thinking that has to go into this, into this part. Uh, this is the shape pretty much of the previous boat. I like it, but I'm thinking that if I angle this slightly more, and that'll bring the chine in right up to the stem, a little bit more of an angle all the way through. And so looking down, what you would see, if the chine crosses earlier, then you're going to get sort of a parallel uh, angle all the way through. You can see that as opposed to this. And I'm thinking that's what I'm going to go for. And it won't hurt any of the rest of the lines as far as I can tell. So what I'm going to do is kind of eyeball where that intersection point at the chine would be at the height we want it and to maintain sort of a parallel angle across and calculate that how far back and work out what the shape of this stem needs to be from there that's the goal we'll see we'll see I kind of a little bit of a curve here uh, brought the shine intersection point back to get a little bit uh, more continuous angle in and then you do kind of want the longest water line you can get you're going to get that bow in the water as soon as possible just for efficiency you can talk about hull speed sometime um, but trying to translate that by taking the uh, bevel off of our one Projecting that full size. Here's R1 coming down. Uh, that's the keelson coming across. The height the bow should be, the distance, new distance in where the chine comes in. And then just kind of lofting it out with the, with the batten. Um, that and take your picture. Can you say hi? and a quarter that we used on the ribs and the chine these these uh, one by ones will be cut at an angle as they lay on top of here so we want to make sure there's a little bit more room Back here where it meets R1, uh, just get some decent little radius drawn off of the bottle cap, why not? And then up here, there's going to be uh, mahogany deck boards coming together from each side. And I'm going to support that joint uh, back a little bit. <clears throat> Uh, so we'll calculate that and draw down some kind of a curve there. Uh, glue and screw these guys uh, as a permanent place to fasten in the stem and then build this little scaffold last time. <laughs> Lay this 
this guy right into our scaffolding like the other piece. But I do think I like that better. Let's cut out the interior of the stem here. stem cut out committed to the uh, interior uh, the reason it's a little broader here is we need the uh, chine pieces to have a nice wide place to land as they'll be I have some leftover cedar bits so I'm gonna try to make it out of these pieces of cedar Uh, pattern cut out for the upper leaving room for the shear stringer so just need to make a little pattern and cut out two more plywood pieces my family loved Bob Ross and he always used to say we don't make mistakes we make happy accidents this was a mistake but we'll deal with it <clears throat> this was the outside corner and I rounded over the inside corner so what we'll do is when it goes on, like every other one of these surfaces, it'll need a fillet of epoxy putty. Not the end of the world, not the last mistake. Well, let's see about gluing it up. Uh, I'm gonna try to be good, wear some gloves. Yeah. 